Welcome to a new video in my home automation series. If you follow my channel, you'll probably see my video on the Blitzwolf Zigbee gateway. And in that, I've shown that I've received two Zigbee sensors for that. Well, same for Blitzwolf. And today I'm going to review one of them, which is the BWIS3. And this is a Zigbee PIR sensor. And by the way, this product was supplied to me my Banggood uh, free of charge for this review video. In case you are completely new to Zigbee and you don't have a Zigbee gateway and you want to use Tuya, then I would recommend that you also watch my video on the Zigbee gateway from Bitswolf because you would definitely need a gateway in order to use any Tuya devices. And just to summarize again, the gateway is the device where this unit is going to communicate to the gateway over Zigbee and then the gateway will communicate to the internet and the rest of the other devices on Wi-Fi. As you can see, this motion sensor is quite different from the Sonoff Zigbee motion sensor that we have seen previously. That is a, you know, a more smaller, subtle one. And this looks more like a PIR sensor that you usually get with a, an alarm system. So you have a mount and you are also have a double-sided tape or you also get some screws so this is how you mount the ball and then you have these uh, ball joint at the back and then you can just adjust uh, where your PIR sensor is going to point to so it is definitely bigger but I think with the mount and everything it's going to be uh, you know a little bit easy to uh, point to the area where you want motion to be detected uh, otherwise as opposed to the Sonoff sensor, which if you mount it on a wall, it's just going to you know, look straight ahead. And this can be pointed down and, and to almost to any angle. As you can see, it has quite a wide degree of motion. And probably the other major difference between this sensor and the Sonoff sensor is that the Sonoff sensor is powered by battery. But this sensor actually uses a small rechargeable battery. As you can see, there is a micro USB slot uh, in the middle and there is a small micro USB lead provided. So you will plug it in in order to charge the unit. And just to make sure that the battery is not depleted, there is a separate on off switch and there is also a reset switch. To be honest, I'm not really sure if quickly changing the battery or uh, charging this unit is more convenient. Um, I guess you just have to you know, figure out for yourself. I mean, the way I would use it most probably is just to use a USB lead and then maybe go around the house with a mobile phone charger every, I don't know, five or six months. Uh, to be honest, I didn't find the data how long the battery is supposed to last. And then you just recharge the unit, you know, periodically. It's probably easier than to, you know, remove it from the wall every time you need to charge it. So that extent, it could be actually easier. The manual doesn't have an awful lot of information. All it says that the best performance of the sensor, it is if it is placed about two meters from the ground. I'm not sure if that is really, really required. Maybe it just they meant to say that it's you know the detection is probably best in 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 and around two meters. And of course, because it's a passive infrared sensor, you should mount it in a place where it doesn't receive direct sunlight or extreme heat or cold, maybe from an air conditioning unit. And with this, I think I've already gone through the up unboxing. As you can see, everything is here that you find in a box. You have a couple of mounting options and then you have this uh, charger lead. Of course, you are not provided with a USB charger. So you have to provide your own power bank or wall charger in order to charge the unit. It looks like that the unit came fully charged. And even though I covered the pairing in my other Zigbee video, but you just turn it, turn the device on and then you start the pairing process from the Zigbee gateway device. And in that pairing process, it's actually going to tell you that in order to pair this device, this red LED should be blinking quickly. And for that, you just need to press the reset button for more than five seconds, and then the pairing should be enabled. But if you are not sure about how to do that, just watch my other video on that process. So I've already added the motion sensor to my Tuya app and you can see that it sits in my living room actually. Yep. And on the main screen you see an icon of the motion sensor. I'm already getting some alarms. And you also see an indication of when the last alarm was. So the date and the time. And when you go into the motion sensor, well at the moment it says no intruder because oh okay. So there are some uh, alarms. So this is how the screen looks like. So you can look at the last alarm. You can see the battery status as well. So that would always give you an indication that the battery needs to be charged. 
But that's it, pretty much it. You, if you click on this main icon, nothing really happens because, well, I mean, this is just a sensor. And if you click on the click to view more, then you are just seeing the list of the various alarms. And, well, it's just going to tell you when motion was detected and you can clear the historical data. Yep. And I get a new motion alarm. And by the way, I know that on my Sonoff uh, Zigbee motion sensor, there was a lot of question about re-triggering. And I'm going to look into that in, the in a future video, like how this Zigbee unit compares with the Sonoff unit. I just don't want to talk about it now because I didn't have enough time to, you know, fully test this one. But you can see that I'm just sitting in front of the sensor. I'm here and it's already triggered quite a few times. It, it, so it appears to be definitely more sensitive than the son of motion sensor and it appears to trigger much quicker as well than the son of motion sensor. So we will see. But let's continue with the basic review now. And if you click on this cogwheel icon here in the lower right corner, then you have this option where it says PIR and you can turn it on and off. And well, this is a little bit misleading because it's not to turn off the PRR sensor because at, as you can see, it has just triggered now as well, but you can turn off the notification. So, uh, well, I mean, after some time it gets really, really annoying. So actually I'm glad that I can turn off the notification. And that's pretty much it. If I go into the device settings, we have the usual suspects. So you can change the name and the icon of the device. You can change also the location, so which room it is in and you can look what automations are assigned to it. You can also enable the offline notification, share the device between different users and also create groups. And um, this could be quite useful. So if you have like a long corridor, you can just uh, group the motion sensors into one single group. So if any one of them triggers, then it's like all of them trigger at the same time. So it's going to make your, so it's going to make your automation setup a little bit easier. So I just only have one, so I don't have a lot of things to do in here. So let's try to create a few automation so we can see how it behaves and then, you know, what we can do with this sensor. So I'm just going to go out and I'm going to select smart and then create a new automation. And let's look at the triggers. So when the device status changes and the BWIS3, so we have two options and actually this is really good. So we have a PRI state and a battery level. So again, let's see that I will definitely want to set up an automation so that when the battery level is low, I get a notification. So send a notification to the message center and then next. Yeah. So I'm receiving a notification that the battery level is low. And of course it should be effective in every period. And when I save it, then this automation is set up. And before you save this automation, you can click here in the name and rename it because that will be the message that you receive in the notification center. So you can rename it to something like, you know, motion sensor battery level is low. So this is good because, well, I don't have to look at the device status. I will get a notification when the battery level is low. Okay, that looks great. So let's try again. When the device status changes, PRI state, and I get an alarm. So as you can see, you are getting one single event when motion is detected. It's unlike the son of one where you are getting an event when motion is detected and motion is no longer detected. So here, let's say we run a device and I want to turn on this lamp when motion is detected. And that's my BWSS4 and switch one and it's going to go on. And, and then that's it. So when the PRI motion is detected, I want that device to turn on. I mean, here we are only defining one action is when, you know, motion is detected. So we haven't really set up anything where, how this uh, unit will get turned off, but actually I could do it here as well. So uh, the task is when the, the, you know, the unit should be turning on and I can add additional stuff here. So for example, maybe I can add a two minute delay and then add another action, run device and the SS4 and then switch it off. So with this now, the device, the BWSS4 is going to turn on and then after two minutes, it's going to turn off automatically. So now we have seen that the motion is detected. 
we also get the alarm and then the BWSS4 has turned on and if we wait for two minutes it's going to turn off and I will try not to move now but as you can see the two minutes has expired and then the device has automatically turned off and of course when you create this automation and you only want this automation to only run on the night time you can just quickly click here on the effective period and then say I only want this automation to execute from sunset to sunrise and you have a portrait automation which is only going to come on during the darkness that will be my review of the Blitzwolf IS3 Zigbee motion sensor if you are interested in this product, I'm going to leave purchasing links in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.